Hey Fly Tires, welcome back. My name is Matt, and the pattern I'm going to be showing you tonight is another one from Charlie Craven's Tying Nymphs. This one's called the 20 Incher. It's not a terribly complicated fly, but there is a lot going on, but it can be a super effective nymph pattern, so I think you're going to enjoy it. Stick around. I will explain the materials as I go and, of course, put the recipe in the description. So first off, in the vise, I've got a size 10. It's a curved hook. You can tie this from anywhere up to a size 6 down to a 14. I've got a 2.8 millimeter tungsten bead. You could probably go to 3 millimeter on it, but I think 2.8 has worked well. So I'm going to lay down about 15 wraps of 015 weight. After you get that jammed up in the bead, take your black thread. I'm using 70 denier UTC. Build up a little base right here and I'll cover some of the weight and then build the taper back to the bend of the hook. Okay, when you're happy enough with the taper there, Take some brown goose biots, snip a couple of these little guys off right here. Now make sure you drop them three or four times, that makes it a lot simpler. So you want to put the flip one of them around with concave sides facing each other. Now what I do, I'll lay them both on here at the same time, a little bit on the near side, close to me. So I'm going to put one wrap not a tight wrap, maybe fairly taut, but not real tight. And then see it's still close to my side. When I pull it down tighter, it should spin it around. But you want to just, you could position them a little bit more before you put that tight wrap on. So that tight wrap right there, spun them around just a little bit. I've got one of them going down a little bit. So I'm going to try to adjust that up. Okay, if you're happy enough with your position right there, take a look at that. Those are coming off the, the back fairly even. So I'm going to go ahead and catch these in up to the, the weight. Okay, you might have to snip the last little bit of that right there. So per Charlie's instructions, bring it up to about the 60% point. Now we'll tie in our tan floss. It's a little fuzzy right there, so I'll lick my fingers and pull it together tighter. I'm going to catch that in right there and then pull it back. I'm going to wrap this all the way back to the tail. Be careful not to take any wraps farther back than the first wrap you have on your biots there, or you will likely move them around. The recipe calls for is, you know, we don't, it's not a perfect taper right there, but we're going to make that a taper with some dubbing. So, just some olive color dubbing, anything you got that's will, will not show under that the peacock curl we're going to wrap on just a second, just a, in a minute here. So this might take a, a couple of, to get a good taper, it might take a couple of dubbing noodles on here. So I will speed this up so you don't have to watch this in real time. Okay, now when you're happy enough with that taper, take four strands of peacock curl. Now you don't want to break off just the tips. You want to break it off uh, at least a couple inches. You want to get rid of that, the brittle, brittleness there. And you have four so you can wrap a pretty wide swath as you go up. So catch these in up here at the front of your, your body and just open wraps bringing these back. 
Now bring your thread back up to the front. Now you don't want to spin these as a rope. I'm going to lay them side by side and then wrap forward covering more of the hook with every wrap this way. Okay, when you've got that body wrapped up the front, snip that off. Maybe another wrap or two to secure that. Now I'm pulling up the floss. This is going to be our rib. So I will give this a clockwise spin before I start it. I'm going to counter wrap it to this peacock curl. Might take one full wrap right there at the tail before we get started. And now I'll do my spiraling wraps going forward. On this size hook, probably four or five wraps. Now don't worry so much about the spacing on that front wrap. It's going to be covered and we have a little bit more dubbing to put on so you're not really going to see that one. So bring your tying thread back to just maybe that 60% point we were talking about, maybe a little bit forward of that. Now we'll tie in the wing case. Just a slip of mottled turkey feather, could be a tail feather, could be a wing feather. So I'm going to tie it with the darker side down so that when I flip it over, the darker side will be on top. So just a couple of wraps right there. Check your position. Are you centered on the top? pretty close where I want to be. So I'm going to go ahead and lock these in right here. Now let's get the legs on this thing. So Hungarian partridge, tiny little feather right here. Pull off all the fluff. Now how you prepare this is just grab the tip and pull it open down like that. So you'll want about maybe eight fibers on each side. Okay, I think we're good right there. I'm going to snip off this tip right here just to give me a, a little small triangle tying point. And I'm going to tie this with the dark side down because we're going to flip it over as one of the last steps. So I will, I'm going to have a couple to trim right there, but two or three wraps to get this caught in. Go ahead and trim the front of your butt end off here. Now make sure you got these caught in pretty well. Now we're going to dub the thorax. So put a little wax on. On your thread, grab a good old hair's mask. I'll see if I, you can see where I've been pulling off. Pull just a small pinch of that. See that right there, kind of buggy. Just rolling it in my fingers for a minute, for a second. And then dub this pretty thick little piece right here on my thread. Now it's going to be buggy, but we'll we'll clean that up and as one of the final steps. That's probably a little buggier than I like, but we'll go with it. Now bring your legs, your partridge shackle over. Pull these back to the side and down. Now get a, a wrap or two behind. Not too tight, just want to check my position before I really lock it in. Are our legs coming off both sides? Well, they're coming off the top there. The bottom's a little bit not coming off the way I want it. So I'm going to readjust right there. And then one more locking wrap before I snip this butt end off right here. 
and you can use your wing case pulling this over to help position these legs. So bring your wing case directly over. I'm going to put a fairly loose wrap right there and check my position. Okay, I like that all right. One more tight wrap. I'm going to lift it up. One more under there. And one more to secure before I snip off this wing case. Get in there as close as you can get. It will be less we have to bury in the head. So we're not done. we got a, another step or two on here. So I'm going to push these butt ends up, see if I can get that buried in right there. Now we have two options of how we can finish off this fly. You can dub a very small, put a very small bit of dubbing and then maybe one or two turns right behind the bead, or you can whip finish it and then put a hard case, a hard coat of head cement or UV resin on that wing case. So that is what I've been doing. I'll show you that. I think it, it looks pretty good. It gives it just a, a bit more, I don't know, a, a little harder, harder shell look. So I'm using UV resin thick. You could use anything you got, but one big drop right here, touching the bead and on that whole wing case. So when you do that, put your bodkin down, smooth it out a little bit. Try not to get on that peacock curl. You don't want to mat that up, but fully coat that turkey feather there, that wing case. Now if you got it where you like there, put your UV light on it for about 10 or 15 seconds to harden that up. Maybe give it a little spin. And there you have it, the 20-incher from Charlie Craven's Tying Nymphs. A great pattern, very useful, stonefly-type nymph. Uh, if you've never fished with these, give it a shot. I think you'll be happy with it. So that's all, folks. I appreciate you watching, and uh, we'll see you next time.